What's up, everybody? This is the Twins Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Pat Davidson. And this is my co-host, Dr. Marcos Rodriguez. Not a doctor. We don't have any technical support today, so we're just fucking shooting everything off the dome. Yeah, just the two of us. As it was always meant to be. Peas in a pod. Yes, sir. So today, um, we're going to talk about mentality as it pertains to training. And, you know, it's funny because I, I don't come from kind of like a, a bodybuilding style background of training. Me neither. Just but, you know, one of the things that I've noticed about, because like we're spending more time with you and spending more time with Ethan and just being around um, guys that you know, like being able to watch someone like Mike Isretel train and seeing, you know, his, his boys like uh, Charlie and, and Jared, you know, it seems like there, there is like a bodybuilding lifestyle. That kind of exists, and it is discipline and consistent. You know, yeah, like consistency, discipline in in a lot of ways too. Like in terms of food, lifestyle, and of course training. And you know, I'm just curious, sort of like uh, what comes to your mind when it when it kind of comes to like a lifestyle and toughness and discipline. Like, how'd you kind of get into it? What are the big pieces for Oh, it? boy. Boy, 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 boy. So, little Bodega boy over here grew up in a grocery store. And every day, my dad would wake me up, uh, either by snapping his fingers in my ears while I was sleep-deprived, or splashing water in my face, which I thought was brilliant. Just, oh, yeah. I could hear the fingers flicking. And then we proceed to go to the grocery store, where it was just basically child labor. Now, I remember growing up, I fucking hated every second of it. And so one day around eighth grade, I was like, you know what? I hate this shit so much. I'm going to turn it into a game. I'm not going to hate it, and I'm going to love it, and I'm going to try to work myself into the ground just for fun, see how far I can go. I'll never forget that day because my uncles who also clearly worked at the fucking Dominican grocery store, right? We're all like, hey, man, are you all right? And then skate off today, and I'm like, nah, man, I'm good. I'm just fucking in the zone. And ever since then, it just sort of stuck with me. It's just like one foot in front of the other. Just fucking keep going. If something makes you feel uncomfortable or make your skin crawl, for the most part, especially when it's work-related, I'm not talking about like pegging or any of that stuff that you're into, uh, you just got to keep going. Listen, if you haven't tried it, it's actually amazing. Mike Isretel talks about that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> that name. maybe that was just to me, a secret conversation. But uh, it's sort of like the David Goggins thing, man. It's just one foot in front of the other. And uh, just grind. You know, when you're following a program, especially, and I think this is pretty across the board, whether you're an old lifter, power lifter, or a bodybuilder, sometimes the monotony of the program fucking sucks. And just when you thought it was bad, guess what? You got more reps, more sets, more fucking volume, and you're just fucking crushed. But at the end of that rainbow, lie all the fucking gains you seek. So, um,. I think it's an inherent inherent disposition that uh, is learned maybe, born with, and you just have to carry it on with you in life. It may be easier for us as trainers, since we always we fucking basically live, shit, and breathe the gym. We're always in a gym. Um, maybe not practical for gen pop. I don't know, man, but I like to at least think that especially when, when I'm surrounded by my friends or all the people who sort of, uh, I don't want to say look up to me because that makes me feel weird, but like people who, you know, who, who, I don't know, people in my life, I don't want to let them down when I'm working out, so I try to just give a little bit more. I don't know. You don't know, you don't know who's looking, so I don't want to be the guy who's like fucking sandbagging shit, kind of half-assing. So I'd rather just grind just a little bit more every day. It, it makes such a difference. Like, it's, it's so... It's so interesting, like, whether or not you're born with it or whether or not it can be... It can definitely be cultivated. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it can definitely... It's not like... I know in, in David Goggins' book, too, he kind of starts off with talking about how he went to a lecture that was done by, like, a Harvard professor, and the professor was basically saying, like, it's a genetic thing. You know, and Goggins was super pissed at that. He was like, hell no. Like you can develop yourself and you can teach yourself your own mind and what it can tolerate. And, um, but I wonder sometimes like, you know, is it like, 
certain people are genetically directed to go that route of wanting to test themselves and wanting to to really be able to figure out what they're made of or is it literally that anybody can do it and I think it's almost like anything else like training wise there's like everyone's got their floor and everyone's got their ceiling that mm -hmm. they can grow into and it's it might just be that some people genetically have a much higher ceiling like a Goggins for instance where it's like you know the motherfucker can just tolerate punishment on a level that like would would Break. His brain is fucking broken. Yeah. But he's he's an extreme example. I mean, there's a lot of guys out there. Wim Hof and all that shit. Just push it to the limit. I get it. I love it. I dig it. Um, yeah. And, you know, it's... So, for me, it's just such... There's always, like, an evolution as you go through your training life. And, you know, I feel like when I was in high school... Uh, you know, I was kind of talking about this the other day, but for me, like, my childhood was just, it got ripped apart, you know what I mean? Like, I had a pretty good situation with What's my... What's childhood? It kind of, yeah, you know, like, I had a pretty good situation with my grandparents, and then when they died, I got put with my mother, who was just like a, a nightmare, you know what I mean? Drug addict, but completely unable to really take care of a kid, and then, um... You know, it turned into a custody battle, and ultimately, like, I, my, an aunt of mine got custody of me. And, uh, but I can remember, like, during this time of, of this custody battle, when that was going on, like, the only thing that I had to look forward to was before court started, because it was happening a lot in the summer, was I got to go out and I got to play baseball in the morning at a camp. And all of a sudden, like, I was showing talent and, like, promise and something. And all the coaches and, and guys there were like, holy shit, man. Like, you're fucking good. Like, it was just, I had a gift of being able to hit a baseball and throw a baseball. And, um, and then for the rest of the day, I would just be stuck at this courthouse, sitting on a bench out in the hallway, waiting as these proceedings were going on mm -hmm. in the courtroom that were going to determine, am I going to go with option A of being sent with my fucking nightmare mother and dragged to hell with this person for the rest of my life? Or am I going to have option B of being able to go off with my aunt who at least was like a sober human that had a functioning brain and could take care of somebody? But it was a lot of just like the, like I said, the only positive outlet was physical. And that kind of stayed that way a lot because you know, I was just fucked up as a kid. But I had sports, and I had that outlet in that direction, and I feel like I just kept pushing in that area. And, you know, I fucked myself up later with my own demons I created with substance abuse, and I was able to get out of those demons with going into mixed martial arts, and I was able to kind of discover training differently with that. Because baseball is a sport of, like, gifts, you know what I mean? Like, you got to be gifted to be able to throw and hit and run. Or Dominican. Well, I mean, there's the get, like, you know, just the speed, the power, the ability to throw, the length of the arm, like, everything. Like, but I can remember, like, you know, because Dominicans really started to come into and dominate baseball a lot in the 90s, you know? And that was when I was coming up, and all the coaches were like, man, these American kids kind of suck. Like, they, you know, you see all these kids in the Dominican with, like, long arms and legs. They can fucking fire the ball. They can run. They can hit. They have all the tools. Like, you guys are slow and can't throw in comparison. You can hit with some power, but you can't throw and run like the Dominican kids. And it was like, shit, man. But that's like, the same thing we're talking about. These people, third, third world country, are coming from yeah. a place of struggle. Hungry. And you just got to fucking crawl out of that hole. Yeah. I feel like... Even when you were sitting outside of that courtroom, I'm sure there was like this fucking constant buzz of just discomfort where you're like, I don't want to fucking be here. Whether yeah. it was the lights, the floor that you looked at, the smell of the fucking room, yeah. the benches, the fucking people with their fucking bug eyes looking at you. You know, it wasn't even that, man. Like, I would just dissociate and numb out. And because I tell like, there were only two things to look forward to during the day. One was lunch. And the other one was at some point someone would get me one of those vending machine pies. That's it. That was it. And like I can still tell you the brand name on those vending machine pies. They were Tom's Blueberry Pies. 
and the main ingredient was apples. And I was like, why the fuck is the main ingredient apples? And I was like, oh, because apples are cheaper than blueberries, and they just die in blue, and then blueberry pie. Magic. But, um, yeah, I mean, and I think I've just done a lot of that my whole life, is to be able to kind of block out the rest of the world and just focus on one thing in front of me. And be able to use that one thing in front of me to at least drive me towards something that gives me positive feedback. Mm -hmm. And for a long time, it was just training. And with mixed martial arts, my coach was able to be like, I mean, it's a simple message, but he was like, listen, imagine if you took the same mindset that you put into training and you aimed it at other things. Imagine if you aimed it at school. What do you think you could do? And it was like, shit, I don't know, man. I bet I could fucking push it pretty far. Because it was like I had learned, like, if I starve myself, and if I fucking train my ass off day after day after day, I can move to an elite level in that sport very quickly. And <clears throat> that's a hell of a positive feedback experience. Mm -hmm. And then it was the same thing, like, man, if I just put myself at a desk and read every single day, and that's what I did for a huge chunk of grad school, it was just me and the foreign exchange students from Asia, I'm not fucking kidding you, that were at the library every single day after dinner. You know, I would just go, as soon as dinner ended, I would go to the library and I would start reading the NSCA journal articles and I would just pick up a journal and I would read the whole fucking thing. And I would stay from 7.45 to 11.45 when it closed and read for four straight hours. Every single day for school. And, you know, then I would see all these motherfuckers show up right before midterms and finals and I'd be like, who are you guys? Where the fuck did you come from? And I realized like, oh, this is the, what people do only before these, these periods. But I think I learned so much in two years of a master's program and then carried that on to a PhD, but I just kept putting that same process in. Mm -hmm. I just learned a process and I stayed diligent with it. And I, it's very interesting how you talked about that grocery store, because I fucking hated it in the beginning. Hated it. It was like, you know, like, but I'm gonna do it, because I said I was gonna do it. And then, you know, at a certain point, it got, the hardest was actually teaching college classes and making all these lectures and exams and this whole thing. But eventually what I found was like, man, I really know this material and that feels good. Mm -hmm. And I still have all that material just in my head that can kind of be pulled at almost a moment's notice. And like very few other people have that kind of like just sequestered knowledge that they can just draw from. Like I just have random shit in my brain. Yeah. But it's- You have like specific shit. Yeah. I mean, but it's only because of the work that goes into it. And uh, and you know what? Like, that's like, nobody can take that away from you until you get fucking Alzheimer's or something. But, you know, that's something that's earned. And I like that about what happens. And I like that about training. I like that about studying and learning and having that kind of, like, arsenal on both sides of things. But everybody wants it, but nobody's, or not nobody, very few are willing to, to put themselves through the process. Through the fire. Until they like the process. Oh, man. I don't know. I know you, me, and uh, Mike Digital always talk about this. We're going to come up with an actual formula talking about like trauma, PTSD, and struggle equals like strength or obsession or some shit. I don't know. But uh, so many people are just not willing to put in the work. And I think that that's a testament of their character and who they are. It's the same dude who's like, oh, you know, I'm, I've been single for two years. I don't know why. And it's like, well, you really haven't committed to, like, dedicating your time to, like, finding a girlfriend or whatever it may be. Whatever you put into something, you're going to get out. If you give something 80%, you're probably going to get 80%. If you put in 110%, you're probably going to get 110%. I see so many people at the gym always like, you know, young kids. Uh, I don't even know what fucking generation they are now, but Z on, on their phones, like literally on Instagram, just watching videos in the middle of a workout. And I'm like, I never saw Ronnie Coleman or Dorian Yates or any of the great bodybuilders or power lifters. I don't think fucking or Olympic lifters. I don't think Peter Demos was like, oh, hold on. Let me go check fucking Greek IG fucking real quick. See what kind of yogurts they're making today. Like, you have to be 
very mindful of what it is that you want and you have to be willing to sacrifice a lot to get there. It's not easy. If your first question is like, what supplements are you taking or what's your favorite exercise for X? It's like, you're, you just forget it. You're done. Yeah, we were talking about grit the other day and like, you know, that, that there's so many things I want to talk about, but like Dan Gableman, the, the great wrestler in Iowa, if, if you ever like watch a documentary on that guy, I mean, he would, as a kid, young kid, like 12 years old, maybe even younger than that, because when he got into wrestling, it was again like his, his salvation, you know what I mean? Like, you're in the middle of fucking Iowa, the tough family situation, and there's nothing that there is to look forward to, but all of a sudden you show some promise in something, and maybe a coach says something along the lines of like, hey, listen, like if you put work into this, trust me, you'll get something back and you start to put work in and you see something come back on it and then you put more in and you put more in and he just took it to such an extreme where you know he would drill by himself in the wrestling room all of the individual drills that nobody wants to do just shoot practice a takedown this way practice an escape that way for eight hours a day by himself and he made himself untouchable unstoppable but, and, and I'm sure everybody would like to say that, well, it's just a gift. You know what I mean? It's like, there is no gift that's given to you. You're giving yourself that gift eight hours a day. You know, I was reading something recently in the book Mastery by um, Robert Greene, and it was talking about Bill Bradley, who played in the NBA for the Knicks. And as a kid, what he would do, he realized like he didn't have like the best in terms of athleticism, but he wanted to excel in basketball, so he knew he was going to have to have unbelievable handles and incredible court vision and passing capabilities. So he would build like uh, a device that prevented him from being able to see down. And so that way he would have to keep his eyes up. He would practice by himself. He would set things up around the court, garbage cans or whatever. He would dribble, never be able to look at the ball and hit these things and he wouldn't allow himself to like look in that direction. He was talking about like, you know, his family thought he was like crazy or something because he would do this four or five hours a day uh, on weekdays. And then on weekend days, he would wake up early, go to the gym by himself and spend the entire day at the gym drilling like this. Mm -hmm. And uh, at one point they took him, they went on vacation on a cruise. And uh, you know, he managed to sneak a basketball on there and practice dribbling in the like the, the lower decks where like the kitchen staff would be going up and down the ship the whole way and like trying to hit objects with the basketball and it's like that's the kind of shit that like and then it was it was sort of talking about like when he when he got to college and when he got to the NBA like the fluidity that he played with and the way that he kept his eyes up and just could hit anybody on the court at any point in time they were like this guy is the most natural mm -hmm. individual ever with this. He's got a gift. And it's like, no, that guy doesn't have a fucking gift. That guy put that into his life, like one minute at a time. Like, you know, I, I can remember hearing a, a baseball coach when I was a kid talking about, like, uh, you know how you get to the major leagues? And we're like, oh, no, how do you do it? He's like, one fucking brick at a time. One brick at a time. You know what a brick is? A brick is every time you go out by yourself and you throw a ball against the wall and you field it perfectly when nobody's looking. You know what a brick is? A brick is every time you go out by yourself and you run sprints as hard as you possibly can when nobody's looking. And he went on and on and on for about 10 minutes of talking about all of the things that you can do for yourself, by yourself, that are bricks that build this fucking house that ultimately represents like your pathway to building a major league life for yourself. And I was like, I'm gonna fucking start laying bricks as soon as I get home. And like that stuck with me. You know, I can remember being like 16 years old, like getting this super shitty fucking car and like load, I mean, I had a bucket of baseballs, I had a tee, I had, you know, and I would take this out to the old, like, softball field that was behind everything, and um, I would set up the tee at home plate, I would hit the balls to all fields, I would start just opposite field, right down the right field line, right down the right field line, 
and then I would put a trash can at first base, and I would try to throw all of the balls from outfield where, where, they, where I hit them to into the trash can. And then I would collect all the balls, bring them back, hit the balls into right center, put the trash can at second base, throw all the balls into the trash can, and do the same thing, center field, trash can at third base. And then throw all the ball, and then, you know, just continue to work around the field, and then do it again backwards the other way, and put the trash can the opposite way. And it was like, you know, I can remember, and I would run sprints, I, like it would snow. I, I wouldn't be able to hit and throw because it'd be snow in the way, but I would still put fucking boots on and I would go out and run in the snow. And that shit felt good after you finished, huh? Oh, Because you're like, nobody yeah. else is here. One of my favorite analogies for myself is like, you know, life is like a RPG, like a role playing game. It's like, all right, well, I want to be a fucking level 99 dark wizard or whatever it's like well how do i get there there's these steps that i have to take and i have to keep grinding keep grinding keep grinding and building all these skill sets and all these uh attributes to like fucking get to where i want to go it's not just gonna happen i'm just not gonna wake up one day and be like oh fuck i can squat 500 pounds and deadlift seven and bench four like it's not gonna happen so you gotta come in put in the fucking work put in the fucking work put in the work it's 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 weird because it's like so simple and we sound like such old cocksuckers just fucking saying, hey, do the fucking basics instead of all this other fluffy stuff. And just grind. Do it for yourself. Don't do it for anybody else, man. That's what I love about bodybuilding. It's a, it's an internal, uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Gratification. It's, yeah. it's internal gratification. I don't seek it anywhere else. It's like all the validation I need is like, you know what? Oh, shit. I did better today than I did Thursday last week. For myself, not because I'm competing against X, Y, and Z. I'm only competing against the older version of myself. I'm trying to evolve, not revolve. Because if I'm just keep doing the same shit, it's like I'm not getting anywhere. You know, and and like one of the things I get from Mike Isertel's Instagram, watching him do his thing, he's I find that dude super inspirational with the way he trains because he like every time you watch him do the same exercise, it looks exactly the same. He never cheats. He never does anything except exactly the way he meant for it to be done. You know, and he always, if he's making progress, he's legitimately making progress. He's comparing apples to apples. He's not cheating the reps in terms of range of motion towards the end of the set. The end of the set looks exactly like the beginning of the set, set except it's more difficult. You know what I mean? And it's like, how many ways do you cheat your sets? How many ways do you actually think you're making progress when you're not really making progress because you're just changing the way that you're doing something as you're going? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I, I want to get 10 reps so fucking bad because I got nine last week. And it's like on that last one, you come down, you stop two inches before you're supposed to, and then you, you manage to get it, and you're like, yeah, I did it. And it's like, no, motherfucker. Like, you know deep down you didn't actually do it. You didn't do what you said you were going to do. And, like, stay... Keep comparing apples to apples. Like, s figure out how you actually are cheating yourself and like feeding into the ego's desire mm -hmm. to just have false victories. You know, to build itself on like a uh, an edifice of of like absolute crap. pile of human garbage. Yeah, but I see so many of my clients do that. You know, it's like they're so I don't know what it is. They they want to have affirmation or like prove that they're constant. It's like you earn what you earn on whatever time scale it happens. But don't cheat it and don't change it. Like you have to accept the reality of what's happening right now with your training. I'm not saying don't try as hard as you can, but you have to understand like number one, the process, and number two, being honest about the process. Like accept it. Like you got nine reps mm -hmm. of real reps. That's what happened. You didn't get a 10th rep in this case because you didn't follow the way it was supposed to be done. And if you're a trainer, man, don't fluff your clients. I had one dude come in uh, late last year who was telling me he benched like 275, squatted like 365. The guy was maybe 140 pounds soaking wet. Now, not to take away, there's some strong dudes at that, at that weight. But this, you know when someone just walks in and you're like, this man has never lifted a weight in his life. And I'm like, dude, where were you lifting his weights? He couldn't bench 
uh, 65 pounds on the bar for more than five reps. It's like, oh no, but I did it with my old trainer. It's like, I have a video, let me see it. Oh, I don't have it on my phone. It's like, so where the fuck is it? The fucking cloud out. Don't fluff your clients, man. Keep it real. Yeah. Stay if authentic. You, if you need to, they, they, you know, you're not, you're not building anything long lasting and real. Besides, clients are an extension of yourself and they go somewhere else and they're like, this is my trainer. I benched fucking, you know, 500 with him. They're, what? This guy must fucking suck because this guy fucking sucks. Yeah. Shit trickles down. Human centipede trainers. Uh, ooh, anyway. Ooh. You just want to be the first guy in the centipede. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't, you don't, if you're subjected to being in the human centipede, I think. Depends what you're into. Well, is Depends anybody. Depends what you're into. Uh, I mean, would you rather be the last guy or the middle guy? I don't, I'd rather not be anybody. To but if, let's say you have to be one of the I'd guys. I'd be the first guy. <laughs> well, everybody's picking the first guy, but if you're going to be either middle or last, which one are you picking? Fuck. Because <laughs> I at least... I feel <laughs> like the middle guy gets a little... Because he at least pleasure. gets the shit in somebody else's yeah. mouth. You know what I mean? If you're the last guy, you're only getting shit into your mouth. Like. And that was us growing up. Yep. So you got to go from being in the back to the middle to the front. That's how you get strong. That's the process, baby. Be the hero of your, of your own story. Joe Rogan. Cool. Thanks. All right. Uh, that's it for today. Kind of maybe not what you were hoping for or expecting, but it's the best we could muster off the dome. All right, folks. Stay strong. We'll see you next time. Eat a bag of dicks. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> That's actually a fucking incredible ending.